Statistics and Excel, correlation baseball statistics. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with statistics and Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching chords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're in the icon left-hand side, OneNote presentation 1670 correlation baseball statistics tab. We're also uploading transcripts to OneNote so that you can go to the view tab, immersive reader tool, change the language if you so choose and be able to either read or listen to the transcript in multiple different languages using the timestamps to tie into the video presentations. OneNote desktop version here thinking about correlation where we have different data sets to see if there's a mathematical relation or correlation between them. In other words, are the dots and the different data sets moving together in some way, shape, or form? And if there is a mathematical relation or correlation between the different data sets, the next logical question would be, is there a cause and effect relationship causing the mathematical relationship or correlation? And if there is a cause and effect relationship. The next logical question would be, what's the causal factor that's causing the causal relationship, which is causing the correlation or mathematical relation between the different dots and the different data sets? We're not going to be looking at a baseball statistics. We're going to be pulling our stats or imagine they pulled from when we did this in Excel, this baseball reference website. We're not advertising for them but we're just getting our data there. So we can imagine going to the website as we did when we worked this in Excel, and you can check this out in Excel if you so choose. And we have the option of downloading the Excel, but it's limited. So we were able to uh, transpose it to a CSV file, which is comma delimited, and then simply copy this entire thing, paste it into Excel, and change the formatting from a comma delimited formatting to a table, which is a common uh, theme oftentimes because oftentimes data sets might be in a CSV or comma delimited file. When we pulled it in, we get something that looks like this. We have, of course, baseball stats. Now, note that baseball stats are similar to job stats. So baseball is great because you have a whole lot of stats in baseball due to the nature of the game, but it's a job for them. And many of the concepts we apply when analyzing different baseball players can be applied to different jobs as well. We're going to try to break down what are the essence of the jobs, what can we measure in the job, how can we use ratios, and we can apply some of these statistical analysis to judge performance of one person to another. And of course, compensation, you would think, should be based on performance, based on these kind of this type of analysis. Uh, so. We've got the age, we've got all of these stats up top. We're going to be focusing in on, let's pick like the age and the batting average. So the batting average over here represents how many times someone uh, gets on base. So it's kind of a, a versus how many times they were at bat. So if they're, if they're at bat, they're hitting. If you're not familiar with baseball, they're trying to hit. They're trying to get on base, whatever, what, whether that be first, second, third, or a home run. And, uh, and they have a lot more likelihood of getting out because there's many different ways that they could get out with a pop fly, striking out, grounding out, being thrown out, and so on. And then we're going to compare that to the age. So as they get older, the hypothesis might be, are older players, is it correlated that older players 
are going to have a lower batting average, right? That would be the hypothesis. So we'll check that out. And so I'm going to take my data here and we're going to focus in on just those, uh, those components. So we pulled in the name and we pulled in the age of the players and then we pulled in the batting average and then we're able to sort them uh, sort them here by these by this table. Now note, when we look at the batting average, the next common kind of issue that comes up is uh, w w there might be some batting averages that shouldn't be in our data set possibly because maybe they didn't have that many at bats. So maybe they had one at bat and they got a hit. Their batting average would be 100% then, one out of one. However, that's not a useful stat uh, generally because it's because it's going to skew the data and really they didn't have enough at bats to really have a judgment. So we could we trimmed down the data set here so that we're we're picking we're we're trimming out those that were very high and very low because the likeliness would be that they didn't have a lot of at bats and therefore they they have outliers on the batting averages. So keep that in mind when you're looking at large or uh, a lot of data uh, that you, you want to think about how can I adjust the data so that I can get to the heart of the meaning of what I am looking for. Now, if I was to plot this out on a histogram, if we just select all of the age and put it on a histogram, it looks like this. So it's kind of a chaotic histogram. It's not exactly bell shaped. It's it's a you know kind of you got the I guess the middle point here, but we have another peak at 30 to 31. It's kind of interesting in baseball because experience might matter in baseball more than in other sports. In other words, sometimes when people temper down and actually get less uh, edgy, they might actually do kind of better sometimes because of the of the nature of baseball. You need a lot of patience, you know, with baseball. But then we've got the batting averages, which looks kind of more like of a, a bell-shaped curve, which is somewhat what we would expect with the batting averages. So we just selected this whole thing and entered a histogram. And notice batting averages are kind of like performance. It would be kind of like performance on a test. And you would think that if you if you are picking people that were all the best based on their performance of being the best, that if you took like the test scores of it, meaning judge their performance, you'd get something that looks somewhat like a bell curve. If you didn't get a bell curve in that case, you might think that something funny is going on because you would think that they're all similarly uh, similarly good in terms of their performance because they're all at the same level. They're professionals, so you would think the performance would, would mirror some kind of bell curve possibly. So if it wasn't a bell curve, you might that might lead to interesting questions in and of itself. Now, if I take the mean of the data, uh, hold on, I'm not, if I take the mean of the data, we just select all of this data and take the average, adding up all the ages and divided by the number, we get to 28. If we take the batting average mean, adding up all the batting average and divided by the number of rows, we get to the 0.22 or 22%. In other words, notice that's under 50%, well under, of course, because like I say, it's it's a lot more likely that when someone is batting that they're gonna get out that they're, then they're going to get on base at some and some way. Then the standard deviation of the sample for the ages. This is the measure of the spread, 3.66, and for the batting average, 0. 0.0555. So then we have our our uh, correlation calculation. So let's just do this in terms of the mathematical calculation for the correlation. We take all of our ages, and we're going to compare take the z-score. So the z-score we've seen multiple times. I'll just uh, calculate that. It's going to be the 24 minus the 28 divided by the standard d, 3.66. And that gives us 1.08 about. There's rounding uh, involved here. Let's just do another one. And so we get the 25 minus the 28 divided by the 3.66. We get the 81 about. And then we can do that all the way down. We can do that for the second factor, which is the batting average, where we can take then the 0.5 in this case, minus the mean 0.2216 divided by the standard D for the sample, 0.0555. We get about five. We could do that all the way down. 
at, uh, hold on, we get about five, there it is. And then we could do that all the way down. And then we can multiply out the two Z scores. So now we're gonna multiply out the 1.08 times the 5.5.01. That gives us the 5.43 about. So that gives us these two bits, which we can now sum up. And if we sum it up, that will give us our numerator. So if we sum all that up, that gives us the 4131, the numerator, the denominator is the number of items minus one. So we'll do a sub calculation for that. N minus one, N, the number of rows minus one is gonna give us 814. Then we can divide out the numerator and the denominator now in the outer column being 41.31 divided by 814 gives us about uh, 0.0507 and so on. All right. So it's not, you know, highly correlated here, the age and the batting average. When, so we can kind of start to think about that and say, eh, well, maybe that's the case because like I say, if someone is in the league longer, then maybe their batting average, they get better possibly at batting and they, they've done more, they've done more steroids, but just kidding. <laughs> so they might be they bulked up in that time or something, but no. So, 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 but you, the performance could go up in baseball. But if I took, if I take my data tab over here and we test that out by going to my data analysis, which you can turn on in Excel by going to the options and turn on the analysis toolkit and go to the data analysis, looks like this. We can check out the correlation, enter the data, which would just be the two columns of data, which have to be side by side. So you couldn't take this just from the original data set we had to put them side by side if we we're going to use this analysis tool for the correlation and that would then give us the age versus the batting average there's that negative 0.05075 so there's our double check that we uh, did on our numbers if i was to then plot it the age on the x the batting average on the y you can see that the trend line is pretty, it, it, again, is, is doesn't show a high correlation, right? The dots are not highly correlated. Now, when my hypothesis would have been that as they get older, maybe their batting average would go down. That's why I put the age over here on the X as the independent factor, which would be driving the batting average, right? But if I flip these two around, I can say, I can say, well, what if I put the, the age over here on the Y, you still get that negative correlation, but now that but now it's just flipped the other flipped the other way around. So it's just a matter of thinking of trying to get an idea of which you think is the causal factor. And usually we try to put the uh, independent factor or the thing that's causing the other factor on the X. But that could just be a hypothesis here. There doesn't seem to be a, a, a significant uh, causal factor between just these data. Now, we can also go to our data analysis and allow it to give us our descriptive statistics just to show that in Excel. So we're going to give the statistics for the summary data and the confidence level. And that spits out this, which gives us a nice summary. It gives us our mean, our standard error, the median, the mode, the standard deviation, the kurtosis, sample variance, skewness, range, minimum, maximum, sum, and count now these are not dynamic they don't move as we as we change the data or or anything like that but uh they, they're a great tool to first start putting something together a model together and then you might do these with an actual formula just to double check or to kind of double check your numbers but this kind of analysis of the two data sets age and the batting average might give us some insights sometimes which might give us more hypotheses and whatnot to see what we want to do going forward in terms of thinking about correlations and how these data sets might be related now if that didn't work we can say okay let's pick some other data so we can go back to our data sets and say well let's try the batting average and the rbi now the batting average is how many times they get on base and the rbis are the runs that were batted in so meaning the, the hit that they got drove a run in, which actually scored a run or a point, right? A run. So, so that means, so if that's the case, then, then 
then I would think my hypothesis would then be that a higher batting average would be kind of the causal factor. And I would think that their RBIs would go up, right? Because if they got more hits, you would think the RBIs would go up. Now, this one's a little bit careful, a little bit, a little bit weird, however, because you'll note that the batting average is in terms of a percent, a ratio, meaning how many times did they get on base versus how many times did they have the opportunity to get on base here represented with a decimal, but could be represented with a percent. Whereas the RBI is just an absolute number, meaning how many, how many RBIs do they have? So that's a, so that's a, you got to keep the, you keep that in the back of the mind and say, well, that's a little bit kind of weird because obviously if someone had more at bats, even if their batting average was lower, they got on base less percentage of the time. They might have more R RBIs because they, they were, they had more opportunities to hit someone in, right? So some, so you might think that maybe the RBIs, we should do the RBIs as a percentage of at bats or something like that where we're be comparing percents to percents. So just something to kind of keep in mind, but we'll keep these data and see what happens with it. So notice the RBIs, if I plot this, I get an interesting histogram. So now I'm just plotting uh, the RBIs and most of them are uh, the, the zero to, to uh, 9.8 and, uh, and then tapering down uh, from that point. And so, and then we have the batting averages, which we saw before, which are going to be, as we would think, more kind of bell-shaped because this is the average of kind of performance in terms of getting on base. Now, again, if we went to the RBIs up top and we took the RBIs like as a percentage of at-bats and we did the same kind of thing, and that we did with the batting average, trimming off the really high numbers and the low numbers, we, we might in that case get something that's more uh, bell curve, but uh, we'll continue with this. Let's do our uh, calculation over here. So here's our mean of the batting average and the RBIs, meaning the average of these two numbers and the standard deviation or spread calculation for those two numbers. Then we'll do our mathematical calculation same kind of thing we did before here we have the batting average we've got the z-score same concept with the z-score now the z-score might not be exact the same because we might have trimmed off a little bit uh more or less uh in terms of the of the very high ones and the very low ones but the calculation of the z for the data that we have here is going to be the same kind of concept 0 0.311 each x minus the mean 0.221 divided by the Z 0.06, and that's gonna give us our 1.5 about. We could do that all the way down. We do the same thing for the RBIs, which are absolute numbers here. So now we're gonna say, all right, the RBIs are gonna be the uh, 131 minus the mean on the RBIs 26.575, and then take that and divide it by uh, divided by the standard deviation, 26.337, gives us about 3.95 about. We could do that all the way down, all the way down. We can multiply out the Zs and Cs, what that does, 1.518 times the 3.965 gives us the 6.018, uh, okay? We can do that all the way down. And then if we sum out that outer column, that gives us our numerator. So we sum that up, that gives us our numerator, 352.89. The denominator is gonna be N minus one. So we can then take the number of data points, in this case, 823 minus uh, one, that gives us 822. And then we have the numerator and denominator in the outer columns. So I can then say, all right, this is 352.898 divided by 822, and we get 0.429. So that's more highly correlated. I can do the same thing with my data analysis tool to double check it, and that looks good. And then if I plot this, I can say, okay, now we've got something, there's our, our, our regression line, uh, our trend line, and it looks, 
uh, obviously more positively correlated here. So we're going to say, all right, yeah, the batting average, as the batting average goes up, then the RBIs goes up. That's kind of what we would expect. We have here the batting average on the X, and that's usually what we would do if we think that is kind of like the independent and then the dependent over here, the RBIs. But we could reverse it, and it would look like this. So now you've got, it's still positively, a positively sloping line, but now we've got the RBIs. And actually, if you think about, it uh, looks like the RBIs would be a, would be a decent uh, way to, to then think about what the batting average would be, right? According to this, right? We might, if we knew the RBIs, we might be able to predict, you know, what the batting average is. Now notice, there's gonna be, of course, outliers on these. So like this one over here, we had a batting average of higher than 0 0.6, between points, you know, point, uh, 0.65 or something. That's a very high batting average. What would that indicate? That would, if they are that high of a batting average, it would indicate that they didn't get on base. I mean, I'm sorry. It would indicate that they didn't have that many at-bats. They probably had a few at-bats, which means the ratio isn't really a valid ratio, possibly. We, we might have been better off to delete that one because they probably didn't have that many at-bats, which means they didn't get, and you can kind of see that from here because they, if they had a really high batting average, you would think they would have batted somebody in, right? And they didn't. Now, maybe they were the leadoff hitter or something like that, so they don't have any opportunity. But still, as the lineup turns over, you would think that they would have opportunities to bat someone in typically. So something seems kind of funny with that. If you flip it over here, you get the same thing. But now here's, that, here's the dot up here at the 6.5, and now the RBIs are uh, down below.